Thanks, everybody, for coming. We've got uh, you know, a great panel today. We're just going to have a, sort of an open discussion, and we'll have time for Q&A as well. Uh, the topic of our discussion here today, we've called it Analog Tape in a Digital World, which is from a high level, we're really just thinking about you know, how is tape used today, and how is the, uh, the demand for uh, recording on tape, mixing on tape, mastering on tape, uh, you know, just using the format, where are the requests coming from, how's it going, what is the repair situation like, how is the state of machines in the market, how is the state of manufacturing tape, and, and that kind of thing. I always tell people, like, you, you've got to look at what, what do you want, any process in the recording realm, you've got to look at what you really want out of it, and if you want to morph sounds and, and just see what happens, like, there's a lot of better ways to do it than buying a Fostex R8, mm -hmm. you know? Like, they're just, they're just, I'm sorry, like, they're down on the floor there, I was just looking at the Kush stuff, and you can make the, some beautiful tools to process and create sounds. And to me, to my ear, a, a cheap consumer-grade tape deck from 1981 is probably the worst idea you could ever have, you know? Because it's just, it's not, it doesn't record a full frequency range. It's got a repro and record head that do the same function. Right. It's hell to, to bias if you even want to dig into that to calibrate and set up. It's just it's sort of like, and I get this kind of calls all the time because of tape op in the studio. And it'll be so cool if we use tape, and I'm like, you know, there's a few good tape formats like two inch sixteen is quite enjoyable, half inch and one inch two track is enjoyable. Everything else is a fucking compromise, you know. Twenty four track, you know, any of us that have lived through the years of making records only on tape. As engineers know that we're always like, oh, you know, there's problems with the sonics and all these things. Noise reductions have their issues. Mm -hmm. Is anyone, I mean, you guys are laughing over here, but you know what I mean, right? You know, there's, there's a lot of, it's not an ideal format in a lot of cases. 24 track, two inch running at 30 IPS with AES curve, it, it's got funk, fucked up low end on most decks. You know, some of the studers got pretty good at it, but still there's, the low-end response is all messed up. You know, that's, these are my experiences from making records, you mm -hmm. know. And, uh, you know, if, if, if what you're looking for is just problems with your sound, <laughs> then, then that's great, you know. And there's people making awesome garagey records lately that are just tweaked and fun. And I'm all for that. Creativity is, yeah. trumps everything. Anybody who's making a serious purchase of a tape machine, I advise them to have a technician, qualified technician, look at it. Because it's just like buying a car. If you don't do a compression check on the engine, then you know you bought a great-looking car that doesn't have an engine and it doesn't run, and you just spent all that money for nothing. And the other thing is that that's the analogy that I use. A tape machine is very much like an old, classic old car. It has electromechanical parts. It has things that need replaced. Got windshield wiper blades forever. It needs a lot of care. And it isn't like a piece of software where you buy it once and then, you know, whatever, you use yeah. it. You can't just use it, you have to do things to it. And many times, the doing things to it will be more than the purchase price of the machine, many times. I suppose the trends that I've noticed with uh, uh, customers calling for, to buy new media, um, it, everybody, aside from our die-hard, everyday uh, uh, callers, people that purchase tape on a regular basis, everybody seems to be a new client, whether they've been They've used a tape machine 30 years ago and they're new to tape again, or they've never touched a tape machine before and they're new to tape. Mm -hmm. uh, with a number of our uh, ATR 102 clients, along aside from their traditional mastering duties, they do uh, quite a number of layback mastering jobs as well. So you sort of see how uh, both the professional and the amateur is using the is using the, the, the method to uh, to produce something for the record. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get to the professional level where someone's paying you to come into a studio and you get to use really excellent equipment, there's so many great results. And and you know, to me, like playing around with something like a fake tape deck when you got real ones there was, is is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, why bother? And you know, let's let's really be creative and make amazing records because that, that can be done, but it has, it's not those decisions that matter. If you're going to make a record using a console and a tape machine, you're going to need one more thing. Person? Talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's the, dif that's the difficult part. Yeah. Because everyone's allowed in to the recording process yeah. now, but they don't always bring talent. 